20 something. Georgia and Emma team up to create a podcast. In Have You Tried Yoga? Welcome to Have You Tried Yoga Podcast. Today we are doing episode 12. Hi. Hello. It is not the 12th month, however. It is the 13th. Because we were naughty and didn't record on time. Yes. Well, our bodies weren't naughty. Let's not go down that track. Anyways, basically <laughs> we had, well, I had Life. pain. Considering the amount of close calls we've had when we haven't been nearly able to record and get it out of time, out on time, it was funny that this ended up being the time that we didn't do it. Well, like, it's been way worse fiascos that have almost stopped it from. Yeah, out. like I had like a really bad infection, and then you had everything flare up at once, but we still managed. And then all I did was move house, and Emma ate some food her body didn't like, and that was... Here we are. Yeah, but we're in my new house. Yep. And we're on a couch that is very large and very comfortable. My legs are up on the lounge. Legs are up, feet are up, lying back. It's very comfortable. It's like a bed, but it's a couch. So we're a bit more civilized now. We don't sit on Emma's bed and record. <laughs> we sit on a large couch. But that's that's what the people come for. They come for that... Uh... Spoony vibes. Yeah, the yeah. the prestige and professionalism of recording on in your be- in a bed. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we have moved a little bit further away from the train now. So hopefully you guys will hear less trains. Oh, there is no way you would hear the train. You do very late at night. Really? Oh yeah. That's bad. You're more likely. We're a few blocks back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a few blocks from the nearest train station. If you want to find Georgia, she's at uh. <laughs> Two slash Hello. 77. No. <laughs> um, we're near a dog park though, so you may hear some borks and some wolves, but that's entirely acceptable, I think. I think that will create a nice ambiance, ambiance. to the podcast. Yeah. Um, so what's been happening lately? You moved? I moved house. I did. That was a lot of work. You but... kind of moved into like your forever home of sorts. Yeah, yeah. So my partner and I got our first residence together and we Ooh, bought wow. furniture and stuff it's all very oh, gross grown up, grown up. Oh, oh, i'm not such an adult i'm not an oh. adult we um we got internet uh 12 Whoa. days after we moved in which was a challenge 12 yeah. days without proper internet was hard for me what else have i been doing i've been working been doing uni stuff i will finish collecting my data for my thesis in two days and i'm going to come home I'm going to run a bath and I'm going to drink a glass of wine. That sounds amazing. Yes. And maybe even... Are you going to light a candle? Yeah, I was just going to say. We were both saying candle. And maybe even light a candle. Um, Other than that, Em has listened to me have a... Ooh, two mental breakdowns about my thesis since we last recorded. I mean, what's the average of mental breakdowns when someone does a university thesis? Like, probably two for the year. Yeah. I'm at two a month. Yeah. I mean, you've got... The spooniness ups the stats. It's a and, factor. And I also care too much. Yeah. I mean, you, what kind of student wastes all... Well, I mean, hex, I get it. But who, who wastes that much money being apathetic and not really doing a good job on a master's or an honours thesis? Yeah, well... Probably lots of people, hey. Yeah, You know, look, like those uni students and you're just like, what are you doing here? This is optional. Mm, Give a damn. There are literally some people in my honours program that I'm like, why are you still here? And they will probably get a good job, won't they? They better not. <laughs> That's I don't, so bitchy. I have another friend that found who was a psychologist and unfortunately that was the reality. Oh, that's so bitchy me to say. Like, not to be, no way. Not to be egotistical, but I'm doing a two-part thesis. I'm doing two studies for my honours thesis, which is not what you should do. You should only do one. But we were like, why not? Both kind of, they both look at the same thing differently. So, I mean, it's not what you're not supposed to do. It's just not common. So I'm doing a lot of work. You're unique. I'm enjoying it. Unique New York. Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's um been a challenge, but Emma and I realised, like, Two minutes before we started recording, I'm doing my introduction for my thesis that I actually have stats about what we're going to talk today. But before we talk about what we're going to talk today, what has Emma been up to besides hating her stomach because she ate? What did you eat? I don't think I ate anything. I think I just got low blood pressure and I got really dizzy. Yeesh. Salt. Because, look, I don't really know. 
it but it felt really lightheaded like low blood pressure but no. i don't know oh well you life's it a off. Mis- life's a mystery it is it and is. i had the monday off work so good that was good i had to um, yell at you to to not come over and yeah. to just rest yeah that's usual though um i went back <laughs> to full-time work which is interesting because like oh, we said we are yes. talking about work yeah work, work, how work, are you work, finding work. full-time now um i'm pretty tired yeah um but is the money like nice though at least yeah that part's good I'm that, just, that's always a good part i am organizing a charity event which i actually need to vip too what is it's it's not on a tuesday or a saturday hey no it's on a sunday yeah i can do it then in any case i do um charity fundraising for lip timber every year which is um, fundraising for women's mental health services in australia so it goes to lots of different services now and they're really transparent about exactly where the money goes and what outcomes are raised which is pretty amazing good for charities but it mostly goes to lifeline australia and um the royal women's hospital in sydney and i kind of i do look at it more from a i guess gender identity approach in that i don't make it just reflect on cisgendered women Mm. when i do my fundraising but i think for the most part it does the funding does tend to go towards that and and at least look at people who are mothers and particularly their mental health uh, yes, issues. which um, we still have a long way to go. But yeah. We actually worked on a Lip Timber campaign together yes. a couple of years ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Also, my hair was really, really short. That was UQ days. Yeah. Yeah. I realised it's been pretty much like five years since I finished uni, which is more than my degree took, and it's really scary to think how... I mean, I'm not even old. I'm mid twenties, but I that's scary. I haven't graduated uni yet. Obviously, it's my sixth year of studying, and I don't know who I'll be when I'm not at uni. I mean, I'm probably going to do post grad, so that's a while away. But I'll literally be like, "What do you mean I don't have an assignment?" <laughs> but you know what? It was really nice for me to get out of the microcosm of uni. I didn't have a lot of friends in my degree, which was education. Um, I had friends that I made through like the feminist group on campus. So that was Mm -hmm. fine. But it was still nice to get out and realize there's another world and not everything that you do at uni actually (laughs) makes a bit of an impact, which is a really depressing statement. Oh, it's so true Um, though. But it's, I don't know, getting out there and having like, and obviously I guess the biggest thing is having a full-time job, Mm. earning a bigger paycheck. Mm. For example, so, well, we might as well kind of, I guess, dive in. above the poverty line. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, we might as well dive into yeah. what we're talking so about today. we're talking about work, work, work. Work, 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 work. I'll insert some Rihanna. And you know that song? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. They um, took our gerbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I found, you know, even as a teacher, and teachers don't get paid, what we work, um, even so, like the pay bump of having a full-time salary mm. as opposed to casual work and um, then also having um, welfare payments, the pay bump is increased. So if you're a Spoonie student at the moment, hopefully you were able to find a job um, in your sector. That's a whole other issue we can talk <laughs> about <laughs> that is really hard to do with the yeah. over-education of everybody. It is amazing to have that pay bump and that's why working is, um, if you can, uh and if you can find a way to work, it's really awesome. So today we're going to talk about, like, Georgia and I have been discussing that we've kind of come to realize it's a bombshell, I know, uh, that our podcast kind of doesn't always talk about chronic pain. What? I know. We end up talking about illness and disability. And yeah, I can't, because they're all identities that are interwoven. And oh, God, yeah. Pretty much, if we're not always talking about pain, it's it doesn't really bother us no, in particular. No, seriously, like, and... If you don't have chronic pain, this is also for you. Like, it's it's okay. Get involved. Yeah, heaps of my friends that listen are not, um, don't have chronic pain, yeah. but they're listening, I guess, maybe to empathize or understand. Mm. But I feel like there are other conditions. Like, you may have fatigue, which may not necessarily be pain, but a lot of the things we're saying would definitely still apply. And on the flip side, if you've got chronic pain, you understand what it's like to have a chronic illness because there's no way that you only have pain and that's your only symptom. There is going to be fatigue and nausea and everything that comes with either your condition or and, medication. And, so. Oh, God, yeah, the medication. But the cool thing is um, today we're going to be, have two very different perspectives. See, Emma's a full-time teacher yep. and I work part-time permanent in retail doing the night shift. Retail? Retail. And I've 
taken well we both can kind of I guess talk about how we've managed and maybe not Mm -hmm. worked as much as we could so for the for about a year last year I've took it's not part-time basically instead of working a full load I took one day off a week yeah and I only work five days a week so I can talk about that decision and coming back from that as well and I've worked in hospitality as well which um was not disability congruent I don't think congruent I love that (laughs) (laughs) it was rough What's like another maths term if something's... Is it just incongruent? Did I just say something stupid? So incongruent would be... Yeah, so it's yeah. disability incongruent? Yeah. Look at me in my maths terms. Yes, I use that all the time in my writings, in really? my thesis. Yeah, because like you can have something incongruent with theory. Oh, I always said entrenched. Oh, entrenched. That's entrenched. a good one. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then later we're also going to talk about... Like smaller businesses, businesses, businesses and being self-employed. We're going to plug some things. Yeah, plug, we are. Plug, plug, plug. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's... Speaking of plugging. We're very indie. We're very hipster. We don't uh, answer to the man. Our podcast is kind of a business, but you would kind of say it's it's on the same level as like Twitter mm. or Snapchat in that it doesn't make any money. mm um, we just sink money into hosting the uh, basically oh, the yeah, we, feed and the files. We we actually pay to put this on the internet. Yeah. So at the yeah. moment, it's not a well. It was never set out to be a profitable, profitable business, yeah. but like neutralizing it would be cool. Yeah. And so in order to neutralize it, plus use some talents and make some cute things that we as spoonie our, spoonies ourselves enjoy, mm. we are creating some. Have you tried yoga themed brooches? Yeah, so we're gonna go to merch. We're gonna do some merchandise. Yes, so um, we'll be posting some brooches that are they are either gonna be acrylic or wooden. So mm-hmm. there's gonna be a bit more of a feminine one, a bit more of a, I suppose you could say, hipster bespoke looking one. Yeah. Um, if you're in the brooch community, hello, you'll see us posting in some of those Facebook groups. Yes. We'll see you. So be patient. We're we're going to get that merch up and running ASAP. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it'll be on pre-order, uh, and we're mm. going to make it at a pretty low cost price because yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. going to charge you to the ends of the earth. But it is something that again, we're using some skills that we have, yeah. some intel and some knowledge that comes from, to a degree, a small business that I run. Yes. Um, which we'll talk about later. We're going to plug Emma's business in a second. Yeah, but basically, so we've got brooches coming. But I guess before we start talking about chronic pain and its mm. impact on work, uh, don't make a podcast thinking that you are going to make money from it. That's probably our first business advice. Fact. And um, while we're talking about our indie podcast, if you're wondering, hey, I'd really like to figure out a way to support these girls. I like their content. We have a free way that you can actually get us out there. <gasps> free. So with iTunes, um, it's really helpful if you review us now you don't need to do a detailed you know description of why we're awesome because we already I know mean, you could do that i mean do that we'd love that but you know rate us five stars that would be incredible um please 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 comment on our posts on instagram and facebook and share us and all that stuff uh let's pull back the curtain or shut it again on the behind the scenes business yep and talk about chronic pain and its impact on work so do you reckon chronic pain has an impact on people at work nah we're nah mate we're robots it's fine fine. we turn off the chronic pain nine to five or in my case four to twelve well apparently i guess you could say this for any facet of living your life if you are able to work it can boost someone with chronic pain pain's self-esteem oh god yeah and boost their morale and give people a more fulfilling life so If you are able in some way, working is a good thing. Yes. So the challenges of work and the social interactions can even serve to distract you from Mm. your pain. And if you have a great supportive workplace, you can even find a workplace where someone will see that you might be a little bit in pain and hand you a heat pack as you're diving under your desk to melt under there for a while. Yeah, I've actually, I, this is kind of tangential, but I was listening to a radio show and one of the presenters has endometriosis and they're talking candidly about how one of the presenters had to uh, just vanish for a little bit under the desk with a heat pack and I thought that was very um, candid and cool. 
Uh, it's the girls who were promoting endometriosis. Um, oh, yeah. Um, with the endoactive chick went yeah, on there. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, I can visualize who you're talking about, but I just can't remember them. No. That's okay. They don't anyway, need us. It's fine. They don't need our plug. Yeah, they have a radio show we, on we real need, radio. We need their plug. Help. Yeah. <laughs> so researchers found that people who choose to return to work, disclaimer, if they can, mm-hmm. uh, enjoy greater success in their pain management. Which, um, that would make sense on a few planes. Having oh, something... like pilots? Yeah, like pilots. Um, having more funding to put into your rehab. Yeah. Having distraction, having somewhere to go that isn't your house and just mm-hmm. getting some sunshine and fresh air. Yeah, having that, even if you don't like social interaction, having that can still provide relief and distraction. And if you're an adult and you don't have like a massive social network, it's a really great place to make friends Mm -hmm. because you don't go to school and like it's a bit harder I think the older you get to find a new kind of social network and the workplace, if you like who you work with, it's a great place to kind of build yourself a social support system. Yeah, and I think I've definitely seen from friends and family when they don't work in a supportive workplace, it drags down your health more, definitely. So get this. An estimated 6.1 million Australians have conditions affecting their muscles and bones, including arthritis and osteoporosis. Why can't I say that word? Osteoporosis. Thank you. And they're the most common causes of chronic pain, and half of those 6.1 million people are of working age. And as we have an aging population, I feel like I'm teaching my geography class right now. It's true, though. Um, you know, we're going to have more people living with pain who are working. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're talking from a young perspective too, but yeah, it's going to increase. So I really don't like it when people argue for why it's like what the financial impact is, why it's bad for like the company mm. to why it's bad if they don't employ people because I feel like that's a very negative view and it's taking away from, I don't know, the humanity of the situation. Oh, but God, yeah. It's interesting to note like just how bad it is if we don't keep people in with chronic pain in employment. So looking at the numbers, um, there is a massive issue with the lost productivity and reduced workforce. So looking um, holistically, economically, it's costing Australia $34.3 billion each year. So chewing that down, only 20% of that is actually the healthcare system. What? Yep, so 34% is actually due to loss of productivity. So what that means is because we're in pain and we're struggling with managing day-to-day lives, it costs everyone money. And that's not trying to put the guilt on those with chronic pain. It's yeah, that's making, what I was trying to get at It's making the point that we need to do something to support people better because, you know... Let's... Then you'll get that productivity back. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at individual lives, I can speak for myself. When I wasn't working, I wasn't as happy because I felt like as a 20-something, I wasn't fulfilling my role. And, you know, giving people, you know, roles back to them that had been taken by chronic pain, um, if we can manage it, obviously this is not possible for everyone, but there would be some people that are trying so hard and employers won't give them a go. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not okay. I often reflect that, you know, like... I don't get so annoyed about tasks that I have to do at work because you know what? It was he- hell just, I was about to say heck, and I was like, okay, I can say hell. <laughs> um, I'm in teacher mode still. It was hell just to get to work today. So me yep. having to do that extra job or call that parent isn't... So what? Yeah. So what? You know, yeah. I'm already in hell trying to get to work. Might as well burn. No. Might as well burn. No, I literally have that attitude at work as well. Yeah, but it's sort of like, you know, you see people and they're just complaining about like little admin things and it's like, if that is the worst thing in your life, well, like, honey, let me tell you a story. I literally said to somebody at work once, people are dying. <laughs> <laughs> they were being really petty though, so oh, they deserved it. <laughs> I know, like, it does really make you kind of reflect and what I wanted to say was that that often reminds me of I'm sure many of you have heard the sort of the anecdote or the stat that working mothers in particular are the most loyal type of person you can employ. I would wonder if this would eventually transition to just being uh, working parents. Mm. But hey, the patriarchy in Australia still has a wage gap. So um, (laughs) working mothers end up being um, the most loyal 
employees because they need that work and if you were able to accommodate them for childcare, raising, going to school, etc., that means you know, they will give back because you were accommodating for them. And I think yep. you can say that's probably the same for people with chronic pain, illness, disability. Absolutely. Yeah, if you put in, they're going to put in as well. If you're going to be restrictive, they're going to look for another place to work or they're not going to be doing the best job possible. I actually was reading the other day that a lot of the reasons why people quit a job is not they're not, they're not quitting the job, they're quitting the boss. Ooh, yeah. And I think that's ringing true for me. Like when I have a good boss and I've had a lot of great bosses, I've had a very small amount of not great bosses. And whenever I've considered like, I don't want to be in this company anymore, it's been the boss because you know what your job is going to be when you walk in most of the time. You don't quit the job. You quit management. Mm. You know, and if, That is so true. And if management can treat you well, even in the most terrible job, if there's a great culture between co-workers, you're fine. Yeah, it's like you weather the storm. Together. together. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. A supportive workplace can help a person manage their chronic pain and it can improve their well-being. So we're saying a good boss, a good manager, um, they can help you adjust your work routine. You're more likely to remain employed if you are able to be accommodated. Mm. And I think that's the real difference is once you get out of school and even to an extent uni, there is not a um, an education plan for life where you are given adjustments in life. Mm-hmm. And it can be really hard if you're used to having accommodations and then you come across a workplace that is just really worried. And I think a lot of people are worried also about admitting that they have oh, an God, illness yeah. to their employer because you, if you're on a contract, you might not get permanency or you might not get employed again. Uh, they're worried about being perceived as being lazy or just giving a bunch of excuses yeah so even you don't in australia i'm sure this is the same around the world but you never know you don't have to disclose that you have a chronic condition to your employer Mm -mm. that is there is no legal requirement it is yours to tell if you're an employer or if you're an employee and you're thinking you could bring this up to your boss here are some things it's not a definitive list that can be done in the workplace Mm. um They're kind of like adjustments or coping strategies. So these are... A great idea would be to promote regular breaks. Now, that may not be possible in every workplace, but it's actually recommended, especially if you're working a desk job, that you get up and stretch every half an hour at least. Sitting is the new smoking. It is, it is. That was a sign, OH&S sign that went around my work. Oh, Lord. And just regular breaks for healthy people are a good idea. If you're not as well as other people, it's a great idea that... If you're an employer, encourage your staff. Go go make a tea. Um, don't have lunch at your desk. Go oh, man, go yeah. somewhere else to have yeah. lunch. Don't stare at a computer screen during lunch, man. Online of that, encouraging exercise. So if you're going to buy your lunch and you've got the time, walk somewhere if you can to pick it up. Um, you know, yeah. if you can walk to the nearest cafe and just stretch your legs, get some sunshine. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, even just getting up from your desk and if you work in a desk or going outside can just have a really good benefit because if you've ever had a desk job, you know, you just you just get like sleepy and you lose time and space Mm. from staring at a computer screen for so long. Just even going for like a lap around the block or something. can help. Yeah, it is kind of annoying when you don't want to do it, but then you'll totally thank yourself later. Yeah. So in line with that, uh, allowing um, flexible work hours. So some companies will do where you can make up time. So if you need to go home earlier, you just work more another day or a couple of days. Or Mm. Or working from home a couple of days a week. Yeah, as well as if you work casually, you put in four hours that you can work. For me, I have a very regimented um, hour schedule. But I can see why it would really suit me if I had more flexibility. I was actually joking with a co-worker today. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could just go home early and come mm. back earlier tomorrow? Oh, that's right. There's only one of us on staff at any time. <laughs> that sucks. That must be hard when you have to call in sick. Yeah, well, you don't. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's awful. You don't. You need to be really prepared if you can feel yourself getting ill, which is hard. But anyway, I knew that calling in. In saying that, on the other flip side is allowing um, your employees to work longer hours when they are well. Now, this is something that a lot of managers would find difficult because if you've got a certain amount of hours to offer and somebody doesn't take all of them for a while and you give them to somebody else or 
things like that but if you can do it that's a great thing so for me there'd be some weeks that I could work five days straight and there's others that I can't work two days straight so you know as Emma said she was working part-time and then her boss was like hey do you want to work more hours and you're like yes please yeah money for me kind of won over having a perfect work-life balance which is unfortunate but I'd had enough I guess rest and recovery and I'm just not poking the bear I'm just not trying to investigate any of my illnesses because that always leads to disaster and more pain and illness so stopping that for a while has meant that it's a full-time job itself yeah diagnosing yeah and originally like I'd wanted to have the day off so I could go to appointments and stuff but that never you know I couldn't choose the day that I had off and I was trying to fit my work week into four days so sometimes having um like part-time work it can be a little bit more preparation heavy Mm. than you would assume but I know for example um so many big businesses when you work in cities offer working from home a couple of days a week and you can just or you can just call in on the day and be like I'm working from home today and I think that is such a awesome modification to use in saying that, while as a boss you're not your employee's parents, like any good parent you should make sure that your staff are as healthy as possible. And there's a lot of companies that will do PD or personal or professional development and you know include things like healthy eating and sleeping. I work for a company, which I won't disclose, who do lots of professional development and one of our modules... I'm trying to think of a really disturbing company to say you work for work for Elon Musk um one of our modules each quarter is on minding our health so Mm. we literally do a module mandatory about mental health and how to make sure we're having a work-life balance just things like sleep hygiene and healthy eating isn't something that we all grow up being taught how to do by our parents and you know it's it's not an employee's employer's job but it definitely helps yeah and the well-being is keeping the well-being of your staff members is an important part of the employees well it's definitely great for the business if you've got healthy employees what were you saying that um places like google do with food yeah so places like google in the silicon valley as well as apple they not only offer flexible hours but quite a lot of them will do staff meals so they'll have a healthy meal provided for free at like breakfast and lunch and Mm -hmm. you can also have your dog with you and that just so in between that really awful sexist guy saying why women at Google why women shouldn't be working and paid the same and given different opportunities he's having a nice snack nutritiously provided by yeah Google. N- nutritious snack provided by Google to um, fuel his sexism I had a family member who worked in Apple for a bit and they spent time in America for a short while and they were kind of amazed at how well staff were looked after. That's rad. I, I guess it's different when it's a big company too. Mm. It's kind of interesting, just weirdly to know, big companies are like really good at doing diversity things. Dude, too. my company's great at that. Yeah, whereas you get smaller kind of companies that maybe are a bit more community-based, but they don't have any big kind of po- overarching policies in place. Well, we have like policies on literally every minority in my company. That's cool. Yeah. And then the other stuff that probably you would think uh, adjustments that you would make in your home, in your car, etc. include, you know, ergonomic furniture, something mm. like a stand-up sit-down desk. Yes, they are the best. Stand-up sit-down desks. If you do an office job and they'll let you have one, get one. Well, and often the employer can pay for it yeah 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 and in line with that get a good chair make sure it's the right height when you're sitting at a desk you should be high enough up that your arms are at a right angle so don't do any of this and that your lower back is supported nope also make sure your computer screen is at eye height don't look down don't look up and that your keyboard is not too elevated so your wrists aren't at a weird ankle ankle weird angle well they could be ankles as well you never know and you know if you're a bit short get a footstool it will it will definitely help your knee pain can speak from experience i mean i stand up for my whole shift and i do at least eight hours straight i couldn't handle that so we have ergonomic mats that we stand on and you know for example my boss double mats so we had one mat per place we stood so she bought a second lot 
So we have two mats to stand on. That's nice. Yeah, and that made such a difference. What do the mats feel like? Uh, it's like standing on very, very, very thick foam. It's like squishy. So is it nice? Standing on tiles is terrible for yeah. you. Yeah. So obviously a lot of places that are in retail are tiled. So there's like ergonomic mats you can stand on. Um, in saying that though, bench heights at my workplace are the wrong height for so many reasons. Um, You're kind of tall though. Uh, yeah, long. but the bench is so high and customers oh. stand so far away from the till that I literally have to climb the bench and do my lower back, handing them heavy products all the time. It's a pet peeve of mine. Hand your items to your cashier. Don't make them arch. Anyway, um, ergonomic equipment is super, super great and it's a really good investment. There's heaps of things for computers. And in saying that, it's not necessarily oh, equipment. You can get, um, um, um little heat pads that warm up with, via USB. Yes, you can. Um, little fans if you're heat sensitive and your oh, yeah. office is too hot, too cold. Um, this will sound Just like a right. this sound like a no brainer, but if you're on your feet a lot, get some good shoes and claim them back on tax. Yes. Seriously. Don't wear like pretty shoes are great, but if you're standing up for a long time, just just admit that you want comfy shoes and just yeah. embrace it. Or even have, you know, wear your heels to work and then have the comfy shoes at your desk. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I haven't done that at all. <laughs> um, one of my um methods is I am allowed to wear stretchy jeans to work instead of dress pants. So you best believe I wear stretchy jeans. Just if you can um get adjustments made you know, if you've got pelvic pain and there's a uniform policy that is particularly restrictive, see what you can do around it. Like, yeah, and that would just be contacting your HR person. Yep. Uh, if you were in a union, contacting your yep. union people to see what their advice is. And even things like, you know, I have a radio at work now. And if you had issues with sound and if you're finding it particularly distracting, you know, there are ways of adjusting the workplace that seems so minuscule, but you spend so much time there, like, it adds up. In saying that, it is a great idea to, if you struggle with motions and things, keep some usually bar in, bars in your desk, keep a bottle of water in your desk. You keep know. tea. Keep tea. Tea for life. Keep yourself hydrated, keep yourself happy. While we say, like, it's great to get up and stretch, it's a really good idea to make sure you have access to the most important things, which are hydration. Tea. Tea. Tea is great. And snacks. The last thing I just remembered. Mm. Um, I think it's pretty vital that all workplaces bring puppies. Yes, there's actually great evidence. <laughs> I just want puppies in my workplace. I want puppies in my workplace. Ralph, I want puppy. Can you come to my workplace, Ralph? He just nap all day. Okay. Um, there's evidence for puppies being great for morale. There's also <laughs> evidence for houseplants. Well, I mean, it's oxygen, right? Yeah, and they've also done studies in um, organizational psychology, which I do not specialize in. What's that? Organizational. Is it literally what it sounds like. Yeah, it's the it's the psychology of running business, kinda. Um, there's great evidence that letting your employees decorate their own office space or area is really good for morale. So. You know, while it's not your place, make it your place as much as you can because that can really kind of perk you up. If you're allowed to keep photos and you want to keep photos, keep photos. Have something, you know, bright and happy and cheery. Get a houseplant if you're allowed to have a houseplant. Like, it, this may sound really dumb and trivial, but it can all add up, especially if you're in a kind of not great environment to look at. I don't know. It's just me. I, I always have a plant near my desk for uni. Because it helps me feel a little bit more sane. Uh, have you what been else? to the plant lounge? The plant lounge? It's down. So I'm going to leave this in because I have a great anecdote that I'm about to tell you. Okay. It is related to work. There is this like, there's this place called the plant lounge near where we live. It's okay. just down the main street. Yeah. Uh, and Wait, it, is that that room? It's literally just plants, yeah. plants, plants. Yeah, plants. It's, My partner and I have been meaning to go there. Yeah. Anyways, we it's amazing. But so I went there with a friend the other day and we were just, she loves succulents. And I was, oh my gosh, there was this disturbing plant called a rabbit foot fern. And it's literally like this crawling furry thing. Nope. Anyways, we look at this business card that's on the desk. So if anyone wants the strangest job ever, apparently someone is offering to plant sit. So that is a real <laughs> job. No, that sit. makes sense. To water your plants while you're away. That makes sense. Water you're... the dog, water the plants. Yeah. 
Yeah. That would be a thing. But and it I... was a legit business. It was like Brisbane plant sitter. No, that makes with sense. With a business card. If you have an intense garden and you want to go overseas, you don't want your roses to die. You want someone who's going to, you know, understand plant things. Yes. How to tend to a garden and the, tend to the, the roses. The usual house sitter may not understand the fertilised process of a certain breed of rose. It would have been really funny, but... I do terrariums, which are little indoor kind of microcosms of the macrocosm of a garden. <laughs> the macrocosm of a garden. Mm, macaroni and cheese. Mm. Um, oh, now I want mac and cheese for dinner. Well, then let's get mac and cheese for dinner. Okay, before we do that, though, we are now going to dive into... So we were kind of looking at things from a traditional going to a workplace sphere. Mm. We now want to talk a little bit about what it's like if you either ha- do not have a preference for going to a workplace or you're unable to and you are more interested in the self-employed freelance or online small business ventures Hmm. so there are thanks to the interwebs there are a lot more ways that you can do online freelance work from your computer there are often jobs that you can get that are like for a big company like telstra or apple or something Mm. that you just do from your home and they allow you to work from home so if you hear me saying no, I'm not saying no to Emma. I'm saying no to my dog who really wants to step on the mic. No, Ralphie. No, Ralph. Ralph, go away. I love you. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, back to the podcast. Yeah. So like there are lots of jobs that like they're big company, but you just work from home and you do maybe like customer service or mm. admin tasks. But there are a lot of online kind of ventures where you can pick up freelance work, work, freelance work where you do like you pick up a certain task Mm. and you do that one task and you get paid for that one task it's usually not as much money as you would be getting um you know as a general salary or wage but it is a way to do casual work when you can and it's a supplementary kind of thing yeah yeah Uh, but i mean for some people you can work it to be your main income but that would require a lot of time and dedication yeah but yeah, so I guess it, it in some ways could be a good side hustle. Yeah. But you, it's not so much of a side hustle. It's not like answering shopping survey questions. Mm-mm. It's a bit more in depth. So yeah, yeah, places yeah. like Upwork or Airtasker, you can get transcribing jobs, journalism jobs, copywriting. There's also things like IT work and... Um, I mean, I like always wonder about, you know those online counsellors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they work in an office or... Like I don't... A, why though they don't need to like yeah yeah. i mean maybe just for oversight but true um so there's lots of places like that where you can you know pick up those specific tasks and do those tasks there's literally people their full-time job is just editing assignments that people send them yeah uh and we have a great spoonie friend um who works as a freelance journalist who does tasks like that and some of these you know you do require a degree Mm. some of them you don't require qualifications so Things like Airtasker, there's nothing stopping you from making a profile on there, offering your cleaning or organizational services, something that you can achieve, even resume proofreading services, something that you are able to do and you only put it up for and make it available for when you are healthy and available. Yeah. So I like that. I think it would be a hard task, (laughs) Airtasker, it would be a hard task to do um, because you're constantly, I suppose, looking for work. There's not as much job security but if that's something that interests you um and is anything that we talk about that interests you about small businesses today we actually have a whole pinterest uh board on our pinterest page account i don't know the correct terminology um that's just called work and if you want to find some tips from um like etsy sellers bloggers and even links to my the mighty articles about places to work (laughs) Just your intense judgment of the mighty. It's fine. No comment. Okay. Um, (laughs) Well, in any case, we've pinned them. I love that you know me so well. You're like, I know that face. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. There was so much judgment. That's okay. Regardless, it's a website. It's going to have its ups and downs. Yeah. So Um, what about if you're not going to do something like that? What are your other options? Your other options and, you know, there's the whole idea of becoming a social media influencer, YouTuber, perhaps famous podcaster blogger blogger wogger wogger um (laughs) so vlogger being video blogging and blogging being blogging a lot of people are kind of saying now that long-form blogging is slowly dying and 
the way they're using Instagram now is that you can write a sort of mini blog in your Instagram post. So that's kind of interesting to note that kind of flow of things, which mm-hmm. is sad. Uh, but there is a way to earn money from ad revenue, sponsors, etc., on social media. But it's hard work. It's hard work. And just because you make, you know, a, a pretty Instagram account with brand colors and inspirational posts and photos and deep and meaningfuls, there are, I'm a dozen. Yeah. So that's <laughs> definitely not for. I think I do see a lot of Spoonie influencers who look, they're iconic people, and I'm not sure. If they earn money, but I hope they would because they have such a following mm. and I hope that they, and they, I don't think they work. So I hope that they are able to earn a following, but there are some, I think you can't go into that kind of thing being disingenuous. And that's for example, mm. why we keep our podcast in you because from the start, I don't want to tell you about like, I don't want to tell you that I'm trying like, um, blue apron or like freaking happy <laughs> socks like and lie to you about i love my new couch it came <laughs> delivered in a small box yeah. look at this mattress yeah um there's like okay. this podcast that i listen to it's a conspiracy podcast it's great but they have ads for like erectile dysfunction and i'm like that's why amazing no i don't want to hear this like i'm okay with learning about what Koala mattresses. Or like... um Nature box. Yeah, nature box and the snacks that you eat, but not erectile dysfunction pills. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I guess I think you can't be disingenuous and you are putting in a lot of hard work mm. for, I'm assuming, not a lot. And I mean, do you remember that um, that Aussie chick that exposed all of her Instagram posts? She was quite yes. young. Yes! living on the Gold Coast and she exposed how much work went into them and And uh, how much stress and anxiety. And the fakery that she had to go through. And And I mean, in in another sphere, I do do like social media marketing and I have worked in that before. And even if you try to be genuine, Mm -mm. there is an element of planning that takes you and marketing that take and business savvy that takes you out of it. So also you can't be truly genuine and nothing is candid. Sorry. That's not a candid shot. Oh, I think things can be plenty candid, but... Yeah. I mean, you look through all the people we follow on Instagram, there's plenty of candid things there. Absolutely. But if, like, I'm just talking about the higher level, polished level. Oh, yeah, like a a Kim Kardashian or... Yeah. Ralph, stop making noise. Sorry, that was the dog door. Yeah. So I think, I mean, neither of us are social media influencers... Mm -mm. Um, and we are going to be having a very special interview with a social media influencer coming up in the next couple of months. Yes. Very she does excited. An amazing, amazing work. Which uh, is and very that cool. is literally all we can say. Yes. Uh, but, um, you know, I think she would tell you that it's uh, like it's not for the faint of heart. It's so much work. Like, it's hard enough keeping up with our very small, small. And I think maybe that's what you know. Insta account. We have. The generation removed from us doesn't understand when they see people doing this what they would assume is easy work is that Mm -mm. social media is probably pretty grueling in, Mm. in a way, you know, it's not hard yakka or hard labor, but it's going to have, um, yeah, it's going to be hard. So I wanted to kind of segue. And if I, Oh, so can I just go back three steps? Because I mentioned our work Pinterest board, Yes, but I forgot to mention where to find it because I'm silly, um, and terrible at promotion, which is why we're super hipster and indie. Because I can't sell anything. Because no one will take us. Because no, because I can't <laughs> sell anything. I'd be like, I ate these snacks and I wore the socks and now I'm on a lounge. <laughs> you can find them at. Uh. And I would have no use for erectile dysfunction pills. So you know, yeah. can't help me there. There's nothing erectile dysfunctioning about you. <laughs> Why? Thank you. That's so sweet of you. Um. So, anyways, if you want to find, so we have uh Pinterest boards relating to all of our episodes, and then. Some other ones that are just more general, like unsolicited medical advice. Um, Which we're going to do another episode on that yeah. soon. Um, so get excited for that. Yes. So if you want to find our Pinterest, it's literally pinterest.com slash have you tried yoga. And if you want to find the particular work Pinterest board, it'll be in our show notes. But it's pinterest.com slash have you tried yoga slash work. Pretty simple. Twerk, 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 twerk. <laughs> And that kind of brings us now to being 
self-employed and entrepreneur and talking about in particular Etsy as your main avenue if you're a little bit crafty. There are so many Etsy sellers in the Spoonie community and I love them all because they all do such cool stuff. Yes. Um, and one of them happens oh. to be my co-host. Hi. There are a lot of Spoonies who have turned to craft and being self-employed mm. as a way to earn money. And yes, so I, I have turned this into a side hustle. Um, so I can kind of talk from personal experience about how I, well, I pretty much just like on a whim it wasn't a huge big plan i realized i had some skills in making acrylic brooches and designing them i outsourced the cutting of uh my laser cutting of my acrylic which is what 90 probably 95 percent of most acrylic brooch maker and jewelry makers do Uh, a laser cutter is really expensive and really huge Mm. to own on your own so if you think of like brooch brands like erstwilder or dear arrow okay it's that kind of style and material um and So I realized I actually had the skills enough to start something like that in design. And I sort of just used what I knew and I kind of fell into it and thought I'd give it a go. But what I had to learn was the business side of it and the money side of it. And so I personally, I'm just totally spooking for Etsy here, but Etsy is probably the best way if you want to start selling something that you are making. Mm. It's probably the best way to set it up because it's not super expensive to host a, um, it's not like hosting your own shop on a website. Hmm. Um, it gets tracked. It's really easy, but it does require that you have things like an ABN okay, mm-hmm. or a business number um, and that you do your taxes correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it means that you invest a little bit of money. So I'm just trying, I was trying to think how much money I probably originally invested in a startup. A startup. I probably, it was probably close to maybe like 200 300 dollars so that included making the actual things getting all the supplies making some business cards paying for um listing fees on etsy and you know costing the time it makes to make a product impossible to cost the time yeah you're never gonna make that money back no so because emma won't plug herself you should all look on etsy for painfully pretty designs Yes. Emma's doing brooches with thematic relations to our podcast. Thematic relations. So she's done a really cool Frida Kahlo badge. There's been um, like awareness pins and... Spoons are my main jam. Spoons. Um, I have a zebra spoon, which is very rad. Yeah, and um, so I have a collection coming out um, that's like mental health, uh, mental illness kind of awareness inspired and they're all kind of like victorian era themed brooches so like a, got a, parasol. a gold a parasol a gold cameo a um corset and a an anxiety tea teacup and saucer so yeah but i was in a position where i could invest a yeah. little bit of money um and i definitely had to learn a lot more about marketing and things that we've been able to use in our podcast that i don't really mind like sharing with the listeners but mm. I guess if you're interested in having an Etsy shop, I would say Etsy has a lot of like beginner handbook manuals that are really good to read online, Mm -hmm. but also there's this really good podcast they run called the Etsy success podcast. And it gives really great tips and interviews about how exactly to reach your audience and think about what's your tone of voice, what's your brand. So when you've got a side hustle and you come up with a business plan, the main thing you've got to think is, what problem am I going to solve or what Mm -hmm. hole am I going to fill? Now, when we started our podcast, we didn't think of it as a business plan, but we knew that we filled a niche because there were no podcasts about chronic pain. By chronic pain sufferers. We have since found Mm -hmm. out that there is another chronic pain podcast out there, uh, but I'm not sure it's from sufferers' point of view. It seems to be two journalists. Mm. Um, uh, and we found heaps of podcasts by professionals, like with yeah, like Allied doctors Health. stuff. Yeah, um, they were boring. Yeah, and Sorry. it didn't have a very like community in the no vibe. God um, no. So, at that time, we were filling a niche, and it's okay mm. if your niche gets filled by twenty other things too. That means you're on a trend, you're on a roll. Um, but that's kind of you've got to figure out. It's not that oh, I want to sell my candles or I want to sell my soap. It's why would someone want to buy your soap? What is the problem that you are solving? Is it that you are giving people a completely eco-friendly allergy? Mm. He- what's the word I'm trying to say? Allergy healthy? Uh, allergy. Non-allergenic. 
non-hyperallergenic? Yeah, hyper like a hyper, like you're yeah. trying to make soap specifically for spoonies that probably can't use lots of other soaps because or looking they're at, allergic to it. You know, sustainability in packaging, in producing, in shipping, in posting. Yeah, and I would say that there's a really big guest trend that when you, even if you are promoting a business, you've got to be okay with promoting a bit of yourself and getting a bit mm-hmm. vulnerable. It can't just all be about the products, which is something I struggled with because I didn't want to put myself as the face of my brooches, as Georgia mentioned. She's tried to get me to mention my brooch business a couple of times on the podcast, and I just, I hate self-promo. I hate people promoting themselves and having ego, and it's like a big There's one podcast that, um, I don't know if we had to, dis- I won't discuss who he is, but he's in the crime, true crime genre. Oh, yeah. And he self-promotes so badly, and everything is about what he did to break a case. And it's like, oh, really? Mate, calm the heck down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he really break the case, though? Arguably, no. (laughs) But he's still pretty proud of himself. And it's like, oh, your fragile little toxic masculinity. Wow. Yeah. So I totally get where you're coming from. But I'll do it for her. Once again, the spoony business is Painfully Pretty Designs on Etsy. Yeah, thank you. Even if you just search Painfully Pretty, I should come up. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so I guess if you're going to do something like Etsy, oh, there's another good uh, business podcast that's run by an Aussie chick. It's called Socialette. It's like bite-sized business advice pieces. That's cool. Um, Totally give it a go. Research. Look at your market. If you Google like business plan, literally templates to help you figure out exactly how you want to work it, they're out there. Mm. But you do have to be in a position where you are going to be okay with investing at least a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. I would say... Probably you couldn't just start a business with fifty dollars. Oh god, no! We can't um, even do that for the brooches. We can't even do that for the podcast. <laughs> let's not talk about that. No, let's not think about the money. Then. <laughs> not that it gets wasted, but it is kind of sinking. It is. It is. I need to send Emma my half of our subscription okay. fees because I have a reminder in my calendar. Anyways, you. Anyways, we're happy to sink it. But yes. Also, but rate, review, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, more traditional workplaces and work styles, there's less of a gamble that there's, you are putting mm-hmm. yourself and your own finances on the line. And, you know, if you're self-employed, just don't be a tax dodger. Please get an ABN. And um, the other thing is, <laughs> if you're self-employed or you're doing these kind of things, don't neglect super. Don't neglect, you know, things that are mandatorily done when you work for a traditional job. You know, unfortunately, no one's going to go, hey, Emma, you know how you make brooches as your main hustle now? Mm. Did you realize that you're not putting anything away in your super for when you retire? Not every country has super, so you might have to explain what super is. Okay, so super in Australia, the concepts um, in a lot of cultures, it's the idea of putting away money for when you retire from your career. So you may do this at different times in your life. It's quite common in Australia to retire in your 70s to 80s. Um, It used to be very common to retire much earlier if you worked in skilled labor. And the problem was that uh, we had to make a law in Australia that your employer has to make mandatory contributions towards a super account. I mean, that's not a problem, though. That's an amazing thing that a lot of other countries don't have. It is. The problem being, though, if you employ yourself... Oh, yes. Sorry. There is no one going, hey, hey. Put your money away. Whereas, you know, I have the the luxury of not even thinking about my super because I have mandatory payments. And it's a great idea as well. Just, just saying, if you um, are doing okay in your career, um, I don't know where you're listening to us giving you advice, but um, make voluntary extra payments in your super if you mm. can manage it. It's a great idea because if you want to retire early, yeah. <laughs> we're going to retire when we're 80 the way the economy is going in Australia. I am glad I am not going to work a physical labor job the rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, Ralph. Ralphie. So uh, we had so many uh, Spoonie businesses reach out and say, you know, I'm a Spoonie business. We had people from... Um, burlesque uh Mm. studios to other etsy stores uh for example um we had a lovely uh message from chronic kindness one who is a instagram business selling blankets that are crocheted and also small baked goodies 
so follow Chronic Kindness one. Uh, also, our number one fan unofficially, uh, Erin, uh, on social media, she has an amazing um, talent. She makes bunting for people's rooms, for different events. It's not just for when babies arrive. It can be motivational, uh, inspirational messages that you put on your walls. Her business is Good Habits Bunting. She's also on Etsy. So there are a lot of different ways that you can make what you do work. And I think that's probably where you should, if you're thinking, I need a side hustle or I need to do something to make some money. Or I just want a hobby. Yeah. Don't think about, oh gosh, I have to learn this new skill. As someone who is tempted to learn to crochet like a million times, crocheting is not my skill, but you know what? I'm okay using design programs and techie stuff. Yeah, Yeah. So... It's, and it's kind of like with the podcast. What are we good at? Talking. What are we good at? Being snarky. What can Emma do? She can fiddle with computer programs. So it was kind of like a combined thing. Yeah, exactly. So now that you have seen to a degree how the podcast sausage is made, isn't that a great saying, how the sausage is made? Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it for today's episode. I think so. Please remember to make a loud noise as you close your door neighbor why please leave a review on itunes and recommend us to your friends especially your spoony friends if we have said something that you find super offensive or you want to correct us email us we don't bite but don't be rude so our next episode is on unsolicited medical advice 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 our next episode is on unsolicited medical advice 2.0. It's, it's going to be a little bit more general this time. Uh, and we hope you will listen with us then. I have a great story about the dangers of non-bottled water. It's a serious issue. You must drink bottled water. Okay. Think of the children. I understand. I mean, vaccines, autism, Illuminati. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, on that signal, <laughs> see you later, alligators. Bye. Bye. Have you learned?